testing, testing. Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, um, it's gonna be a little bit off topic today. So um, instead of being in front of the camera, working on a project, we're gonna kinda go behind the scenes and I thought I'd maybe show you a little bit of the equipment that I used in 2020 to film my YouTube videos. Um, I know that may not be interesting to a lot of people, so I'm gonna try to keep this quick and to the point. I'm gonna try to keep it interesting. I'm not gonna get too technical with it, okay? So. I've always been interested in what other YouTubers use. I'm always trying to figure out what they're using or try to see it in the background and uh, what they're using and how they're using it. And I've had recently this year, um, since the channel has grown a little bit this year, um, I've had several people reach out to me and, and was curious what I use um, to make all of the shots, you know? Um, how do you get all of those shots with the tractor while you're getting hay and all the different things that I use? So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly what I've used here in 2020 to make my YouTube videos. So let's go ahead and get started. So there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that are shot with people's cell phones. So nowadays cell phones have great video, they've got good video stabilization, even some of them can do really good slow motion video. But the awkward thing about using your cell phone is, is being able to like hold it and not like get your hand in the shot or be able to integrate microphones with it or be able to mount it onto a tripod. So this is what I'm using with my cell phone. It is a Yulanzi U-Rig and it's like a cell phone, little cell phone rig. So you can see my cell phone is in here and it's actually still in the case. I didn't have to take it out of the case to put it in here. So that's awful handy too. And um, this, this mount is ugly, right? This is ugly and awkward looking, and, uh, but it is really functional. So I actually broke one of these, ran it over with the tractor. Luckily I didn't break the phone. Um, and I went, ahead and went and bought another one because I thought this was so functional. But it is ugly. It doesn't look good at all, does it? So uh, it does give you two hand grips, so you can like film with it. You can film with one hand with it, but it gives you a good steady place to hold your phone, not get your fingers in the camera. Um, and then it gives you places to mount accessories to the top of it. And then on the bottom, I've got a tripod mount. And that I can just mount this into the tripod quickly, and I can just shoot from a tripod with my cell phone if I want to. So I've got it to where uh, the cell phone shooting is pretty flexible with this. And then on the top of it, I have a Rode Video Micro. So everything you shoot, at least everything I shoot, is outside. There's always wind. So you've got to try to do your best to get good sound quality without wind. And you definitely got to have these little fuzzy things to be able to, you know, try to deaden that wind sound. But that's how I'm using my cell phone uh, to film YouTube videos. So if Rebecca is doing some filming, more than likely she is using this. So it's real easy to use, real easy to take handheld shots with. Probably not the best at doing selfies with. But if you're going to go around and walk around and film, this works out pretty good. So now I'm filming with the cell phone and I want to show you my main camera. So this is the Canon 90D. It is a DSLR camera, it shoots 4K video. I upgraded to this earlier this year because I already had a couple lenses that would fit it. So it made sense to kind of stay on that same platform. So this camera strictly stays in a tripod most of the time. It is a, it's a heavy, well-built camera, and I find that it's a little awkward to, to carry around and film with. Um, it does have video stabilization built into the lenses that I have, but I don't use it that way. I typically just set this up in a tripod, and then I, I set up my shot, and I can use the zoom lens to be able to get it exactly the way I want it and, and film from there. So I do have a total of three lenses that fit this camera, um, but I'm typically using a 15 to 85 lens. Um, this one gets a fairly wide angle and it has a pretty decent amount of zoom. So it's just a good all around lens. I bought this on B&H Photo used 
and got it for about half price. So if you're looking for some camera equipment, a lot of times you can find some good used stuff on B&H Photo. And uh, that's typically where I'm buying most of my stuff nowadays. So the third camera that I use is the GoPro Hero 8. This is the smallest camera that I own, yet it is the most versatile one that I use. So um, you can practically mount this thing to anything. You can put it on a hard hat, you could use it as a body cam. I can mount it on almost any one of these pieces of tractor equipment that I use. It is just a very versatile camera. It's also waterproof. You can use it underwater if you wish. And um, it has excellent video stabilization. You could probably jog with a selfie stick and it would still come out decent video. Um, because the video stabilization is probably the best out of all the cameras is this one. Now the thing I like about this GoPro is that I have several different ways to mount it so that I can get different looking shots as I'm doing work on tractors or other things. So let me show you all the different ways that I use this camera. So the most common way I use the GoPro is on the magnetic mount. I made this mount myself. It's very flexible and it allows me to put the GoPro pretty much on any piece of equipment out here. I can put it on the tractor, I can put it on the baler, the hay rake, and get some unique shots, some from, some from unique points of view. Um, so I made this mount myself. It just has a, I think it's about a 25 pound magnet on the bottom that's rubber coated. And then that attaches to a seven inch magic arm. Um, these arms are flexible. You can kind of move them around and angle things the way you want to. And tighten the knob down and it stays in place ready to film. So really handy mount and uh, it gets used all the time, especially with all this tractor and farm equipment stuff. So the next GoPro mount is the super clamp mount or the crab clamp. Um, this allows you to clamp to anything an inch and a half and smaller. So it can attach to a two by four or anything um, smaller than that. And um, it's got a ball joint here in the middle where you can move the camera around, get the shot that you want, and then tighten it back down. So this allows you to you know, clamp the camera to a lot of smaller objects and get some unique shots that way. So can be a very handy clamp when the magnetic clamp doesn't work. So the last configuration for the GoPro is the selfie stick configuration. And this looks a little funny too, doesn't it? But uh, like I said, the, the GoPro is really good at video stabilization, making sure that your video is smooth. So as you're walking around, it'll make sure everything looks good. Now, uh, I have the uh, GoPro actually slid inside of the media mod. That's what this thing is right here. It allows me to add this external microphone to the GoPro, get a little bit better sound. So uh, my personal opinion is the media mod is awkward to use and it, they can do a lot of improvement to it. So there are several different ways to add uh, an external microphone to your GoPro. This isn't the only way. Now on the top of the GoPro, I have a Deity Duo microphone. This microphone actually is a, is a dual direction. So you can get your person you're interviewing and you can get the person uh, behind the camera as well. So it works really good. Um, when there's two people, um, one of them filming and the other person doing some action, you can actually record both people talking to each other. Now, the awkward thing about it is normally one person is always going to be louder than the other person. And you're going to have to constantly, you know, adjust the volume up and down to try to make that sound even. Now, the I just used this setup right here. I used that to film the tractor video, my dad's flail mower. 100% of that video was filmed with just this. So uh, you can see when you go watch that video that, I mean, this does a decent job of filming. So uh, nice little handy setup to be able to carry around and film with. So anyway, that's it for the main ways that I use the GoPro. So in this case right here is my drone. Um, I have a lot of people ask me how I get that aerial footage while I'm driving tractors. Um, is somebody flying the drone? How do you do that while driving a tractor? And all of that is filmed with this drone. This is a pretty smart little drone and it's packed full of features. This is the uh, DJI Mavic Air. And this is not new technology. This probably came out two, three years ago, but uh, it has a, uh, has a 4K camera on the front of it and it just shoots excellent video. So the drone itself actually has sensors on the front and the back and on the bottom. 
and it can detect how close it is to objects. So it can actually fly around and it has obstacle avoidance. It can fly around things to make sure it doesn't crash. Um, it also has intelligent flight modes where you can basically tell it what to do and then it will fly around and do that um, on its own. It'll fly on its own. So uh, when I do tractor videos, I, I use what they call active tracking. And you basically select what you want it to film. So I select the tractor or the hay baler and then it will follow me around and keep me right in the camera view. And then with a few extra commands, I can make it go in circles around me one way or the other. I can make it come closer or farther behind, higher, lower. I can kind of manipulate where it is in relationship to the object that it's filming, but it pretty much just flies itself. So that's how I can drive a tractor and get some really good footage with this drone as I'm busy driving the tractor. I can look down every once in a while, move a joystick, and I can move it farther away or make it come closer, And uh, but it pretty much flies itself. So. DJI Mavic Air, um, that's what I'm using for my drone. So, worked it out pretty good. So as you film videos, I think you quickly realize that sound quality is like one of the hardest things to get. Um, seems like you can fix bad video quality sometimes, but uh, sound quality is hard to fix and it's hard to achieve. So, I've been really working to improve my sound over the last few years and I've changed the way I've done things this year. And um, I've had people ask me, how can you be so far from the camera and sound perfectly clear? And that's because I'm using a wireless mic system now. So I am using the, the Rode Wireless Go system. You see how small this thing is. This fits right in my pocket. And this right here is the microphone. So this microphone goes up inside of my t-shirt. It's taped to the backside of my t-shirt right here on my chest. Can you hear that? And pretty much just put that receiver in my pocket and the extra wire and it's all hidden it's out of the way and i can still work on things and just walk around and do my normal business um, and it just gets really good sound so as you work outside you know wind noise is always a problem so you end up with these big uh, wind screens on here and these do a fairly decent job but you still get wind on noisy days but so far this setup right here my t-shirt seems to do a better job for some reason I get virtually no wind noise through this t-shirt and I get good quality sound and it's just worked excellent for outside. And um, you can tell when you watch a video, when I have bit poor quality sound, it's not as clear, I'm not using this. Um, you know, there's a, there's a big difference between the days I use this and the days I'm lazy and I only use something like this. So uh, this has definitely been the way to get the, the best amount of sound. And one of the other benefits of it is when you're using a shotgun mic, it's pointing right at you. you, you have to talk to the mic. If you turn around and you're talking back here, it doesn't hear you because you're not facing it. And that's the great thing about this microphone, I can talk in any direction and it gets good quality sound. So um, yeah, that's what I'm using for microphones. I do have the shotgun mics, and but I'm still using a lav mic as well. So let me go ahead and show you the other thing I'm using on sound. Now this is probably not a beginner level thing. It's probably maybe a little bit over the top for somebody who's starting out, but I'm using a sound recorder so that I am, I am recording multiple microphones at the same time. So let me show you what I'm using. So this here is the Zoom H6. This is a sound recorder and it allows me to record up to a maximum of six microphones. Um, you can see right here, this is the other end of my wireless mic system. It's coming in here to channel three. Every channel has a volume knob where you can adjust the, you know, the volume of the microphone. On the left right channel here in the front, I've plugged in a microphone up here and this is just basically coming around it's plugged into the shotgun mic. So I'm recording two different microphones on here. So the sound recorder is not necessary for a YouTube video. Um, that is something that I've kind of worked up to as I've tried to improve my sound quality. Now, I am really, the main purpose of this sound recorder is for me is to record two microphones. If my main one fails, I've got a backup microphone that I can use. So it's just kind of my insurance policy to make sure that I have some sound for my video. So in today's video, it was kind of a behind the scenes look 
at the gear and equipment and the stuff I use to make the YouTube videos that you guys watch. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with the setup that I have this year. I've got most of it where it fits inside my camera bag right here. So I can just throw this in the back seat of the truck and grab my two tripods and I'm pretty much ready to go. I can just drive wherever on the property and make a video. So I've been making YouTube videos for at least eight years now, maybe nine. It's been, it's been a while. I've been making YouTube videos for a while. I did it for a long time as just a hobby. I didn't take it too seriously. Um, and I am working, I am almost up to 500 videos on YouTube. So I've made several videos and it's just really been the last couple years that I've really tried to up my game. Really, I'm really, I'm trying to make a good quality video and, uh, for people to entertain them with. And, you know, if you want to start out making YouTube videos, you don't need all the stuff that I have. I just kind of built up to that. You know, if you want to get out there and make a YouTube video, all you need is a cell phone and a external microphone you can make a pretty good pretty good video um, now me you know I'm trying to improve that's where all this gear comes from and that's what's all going on behind the scenes to make the videos you guys watch so I hope that my videos have been entertaining you guys and uh, I hope you guys have a little bit more understanding of the gear and stuff that I'm using to make them so I hope you guys have a great day I'll see you in the next one